We've covered all of the original trilogy now. So we're going to move on to Inazuma 11 Go, and we're going to rank all of the story players. This series has been my way of telling you guys which are the best story players to use in your playthroughs of Inazuma 11 games. And we're teaming up with Zikrio AK again, because he is the god of Inazuma 11 knowledge, and I am just a feeble little mortal compared to him. And again, if you haven't seen any of these videos and you don't know, we are going to have a little thing in the corner, which is going to be goalkeeper, defender, midfielder, and forward. It's going to tell you how good players are in those positions because certain players are better to use outside of their original position and it's going to be rated from one to five so without further ado let's go from worst to best this is every story player in Inazuma 11 go ranked i'm curious if this will surprise anyone but number 16 is subaru honda aka rusty he is literally just raimon's fodder and he does not provide any use over anyone else Runaway Train is really weak, his stats are underwhelming, and his best move is Pincer Pinch. He is an okay defender, and that is it. Sam Gokhan does not get any other move other than Combustion Catch until level 36. For reference, that's around chapter 8, which means he's kind of useless for the entirety of story mode due to the amount of spirit summoners and powerful shots you're going to face in the game. However, he does redeem himself at level 50 with capable hands. So he's all right, but he will not hold a candle to JP. And just so you know, the way we're doing this, we are basically ranking every player based on how good they are up until they hit level 99. Next up is Shunsuke Ayomama. That's a hell of a name. And it's one who I definitely forget about a lot. And while he just joins with Thief's Eye, making him pretty useless at first, he does level up quick and he gets Hey Presto and Ever Penguin number two, making him a solid all-rounder. On paper, Lucian Dark is fantastic. He has Emperor Penguin number 7 to rival Kaiser's Ballista Barrage, and he also has Warp Step, which is a fantastic dribble move, but his stats are absolutely garbage. He only has 72 kick, which is the second worst in the entire Rhymon team. And 72 kick for someone with shooting moves? It's not great. Eugene Peabody is pretty mid for the story with Dragster, but later down the line, he does get Wind's God Dance and Will Win Force, making him actually pretty good. But the problem is, his stats are really shit. For a defensive midfielder, though, he is actually all right. Will Win Force and Wind's God Dance is enough to make him, like, decent. The next two are very similar, but we're rating Ator slightly lower. And this one does really hurt. Above Ator, though, is Gabby. Now, the reason we've rated these two basically the same is because Mystic Mist and Hunter's Net are basically the same move. The only reason Gabby's higher is because Fugu Wave is better than Blast Mine. But they're both just pretty bog-standard defenders, and they are reliable. Adekebe is a very good all-arounder. He can dribble with Log Roll, he can block with Killer Whale, and he can provide long shoot support with Flying Fish. However, when you hit the post game, he is going to fall off because his moves are really weak and he doesn't have any real firepower. Okay, this name might be the hardest for me to pronounce, but I'm going to give it a go. Xuyu's ba Baudet. Sure, he's pretty useless when he joins. However, when he starts getting his moves, he's basically Eugene Peabody with better stats. I mean, he gets Ozone Flayer, which is fantastic. If you're talking ultimate defender, it's Wanli Chan Cheng. He's a solid shot blocker throughout the majority of the story, but then he gets Wall of Atlantis in Chapter 10, which is basically the best defensive move in the game. And so yeah, he becomes pretty fantastic once he gets that. This is a sentence I never thought I'd say in my life, but Victor Blade is basically the Wanli Chang Cheng of forwards. And Victor Blade is basically just IE3 Axel again. He is essentially a shooting machine, and he can't do a whole lot other than just shoot. But for what it's worth, he does carry throughout the majority of the story because his shots are that good. But it feels weird rating a player that high when that's literally all he can do. Ricardo Dorigo is basically a fusion of Arian and Victor. He's got Victor's striking power and most of Arian's dribbling power. Brimstone Rain and Maestro are really good for scoring, and Athena's Anthem is a fantastic dribble move. He is just great for everything. However, he's nowhere near as good as Michael Balzac, the man, the myth, the legend himself. But let's get this straight. Story Kaiser and post-game Kaiser are two very different people. In the story, he's mediocre, with a pretty weak shaft, a pretty weak dribble, and he improves when he gets acrobatic keep, but not wildly. However, when he hits level 50 and he gets Ballista Barrage... Oh my god, he is amazing for shredding down those goalkeeper spirits. And it's also strong enough as a long shot to where it can score against basically any normal special move. And he has 155 kick, 
whilst Victor only has 127, so really, he makes Victor kind of look pretty stupid. So yeah, he's pretty good. I really hate that he's this high, but J fucking P is in the top three. He's pretty garbage at the start of the game, but when he gets Flapjack Defense at level 21, he becomes a pretty good defender. Then he gets Dance on Air at level 37, which makes him a really good all-arounder. And then in chapter 11, he unlocks Atlas, which is the joint strongest goalkeeping spirit in the game. So he's gonna save all kinds of powerful shots that come his way. And not to mention, is the highest stat total and the fastest level up rate in the game. He is basically the ultimate all-arounder because he can also play in goal. I'm curious how many people thought this guy would be number one, but Arian Sherwind comes in second. He's got high stats. He's got spammy yet decent moves. He's got a strong fighting spirit. He's basically got it all. He's a really good offensive midfielder or a forward. And he can summon Griffin and completely blow through the post game with it. He's basically impossible to not recommend. And at number one, don't let the fact that he joins late in the story fool you. It's Roma. He's got amazing stats, excellent dribble moves, a super strong fighting spirit, and a really strong shot on top of all that. However, what sets him apart from the likes of Ricardo is the fact that he gets put you back into it. He gets it at around level 50 and it gets him a 1.25 boost, which is basically the best skill in the game. He is essentially just really, really strong. And that's the list. Do you guys agree? Do you disagree? Let me know down below. And again, a massive thank you to Zikri AK for all his help with today's video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.